LaFleur. Um, we're, he's a cranberry grower. His bog is here behind us. He's very concerned about pollination of this crop because it's uh, the kind of a crop that must be pollinated to set a fruit. And are, are you concerned about having native bees, honeybees, or what are some of your concerns, Jeff? But one of the things that we really see is the value of native pollinators as a part of our total pollination management. Uh, we do bring in uh, European honeybees and managed bees, but really I see native pollinators as being an important part of that because of the how um, diverse they are and how they work in such uh, crazy weather conditions compared to the na managed bees that we really want to enhance native pollinator use on our farm. Pollination is probably one of our largest expenses during the growing season. So anything that can do to, one, help reduce that expense, but two, really take advantage of how vigorous uh, pollinator, native pollinators are is what we want to do. So we did work with NRCS in developing uh, pollination habitat enhancement plans. And uh, it's been a, a challenge because of the fact that, you know, working with NRCS standards are so strict that we really need to be flexible in being able to determine what species we want to plant, where on the farm to plant them, and, uh, and also recognize the fact that farmers may not necessarily dedicate large tracts of land, but yet may be willing to dedicate uh, a accessory lands adjacent to their production lands uh, for this, and they may be small segments of it. So that's been one of the interesting things is trying to identify what parcels adjacent to our farm, our bogs, that we can uh, maybe enhance uh, without just going in there and ripping them all up, but just enhance with other specific plant species to, uh, to uh, really provide the habitat necessary. You don't want to take, take valuable bog land to put something in, but if you've got some land adjacent that's not in crop, and not you know, like critical making a crop for you, making money then, maybe you could put things like supplemental plantings on the, on the edge or like on that hillside behind us and the, where it's not going to be in production but it's close nearby. One of the things that we really also spent some time working with the university on is being able to identify what species of plants are going to bloom when mm. and during the time during the year. So one, it wasn't necessarily in competition with when cranberries bloomed because we really want the bees obviously to work the bog and not necessarily the uplands around the bogs. Right. But then two, we also didn't want to create um, habitat that was going to create a, uh, a nursery for weeds that ultimately would be problems on the bogs too. So trying to find that delicate balance that provided blooming species of plants from April all the way through to October was one of the things that we had to spend some time doing. Every year something more comes up into bloom over there and it's getting thicker and thicker all the time. But right now you won't see any flowers there because, it, because the cranberry flowers are out. It's before and then after, after right until November. If you look on that, that bank edge over there, you can see the, the green, the darker green colors. Yep. That's, that's native goldenrod right there, broadleaf goldenrod Broad that, that um, comes into flower late after the cranberry flowers have gone by and it'll last right into November. Oh, that's really and, a good source then. Mm -hmm. And uh, I try to leave that, but I was nervous about leaving it in the beginning because it, the seeds could spread out onto the onto the bog, but it's a good for the for the bumblebees. So I monitor it until the flower is gone, and then I come along and deadhead it. And I'm trying to let it spread on its own. And it, it comes up on its own, grows by itself, so all you've got to do is deadhead now, it. Now, when, when you take go with that regime, are you finding that the clumps are getting bigger yes. and more robust? So yes. So there's a no, it's, it's a kind of almost a zero labor in a way other than your vigilance of making sure that you deadhead it at the right time. At the end of the year. You can That's take a day and go around and, and cut them down so that the seed doesn't flow. I'm against airbound seed. Yeah. I work all year long trying to keep things clean. What we did is we mined the sand out just like in that area over there. There, there was a hill there and we used the sand out of there and then when we, when we renovate the bog we strip all the the first six to eight inches off the top of the bog, you need some place to put that. Yeah. So you put it up on the bank, slope it off so that it'll grow grass and doesn't run down. Right. What a better way than to put a bee habitat on it. Basically sprayed it, 
and just r lightly rake the top off and then I insisted on hydro seeding it to hold the seed there so it wouldn't run off into the road and down into the cranberry bog. It's of no value to me that edge of the bog over there. It's a perfect place. I don't have to mow it or anything, you know, and, and it, it, it can only enhance the, the bee population. I think cooperation has been probably the biggest part of trying to work with this situation of uh, enhancing native pollinators. Uh, we need the sci we need to be science based certainly of what's uh, what can be done with enhancing uh, pollinators. We need it to be uh, really ground truth so that in what is in essence what can truly be implemented by the farmers. Right. And that's probably one of the big things is that we can identify all kinds of different things that would enhance pollination habitats and, and enhance the pollinators themselves, but it's got to be implementable by the farmer. You're in a, a delicate balance with ecology and you require pollination so you you can't afford to hurt your pollinators. Absolutely. I mean, without the pollinators, I'm out of business. Yeah. It's simply put. And uh, and I think in the bigger picture as well, people are really becoming to understand the role that pollinators play in just food production as a whole.